Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I am sure if you clicked on today's video, you are probably interested in the field of radiography. And if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Julia and I'm a radiologic technologist, but I also do CT and MRI. Right now, primarily MRI is my modality that I'm in the most often. I used to vlog a lot of my experience in my actual radiology program because a lot of people were interested in things like that and now we're here. So I kind of wanted to give a few disclaimers just because of the world we live in and from my own personal experience, I want to give a disclaimer about today's video. So today is actually Sunday. I'm off the clock, which is why I wanted to take part of my day off and film this video for you guys. I get a lot of questions about what my day-to-day -day life kind of looks like at work. So for today's video, I wanted to do a video kind of just about x-ray and CT. I will eventually do a video about MRI and kind of how the day and workflow goes with that. But when I'm in CT, I do also help out with x-ray. We do have a full-time x-ray tech, but sometimes she'll leave early or she'll be off for a day so I'll cover an x-ray. I cannot show myself with patients because of HIPAA and I also cannot show their images so their scans that I do. I can't show any of that because that's all HIPAA. I show what I can to the best of my ability so hopefully this video will help a little bit to show you kind of what I do during the day. I am here with permission and I'm the only person here which is why I'm not wearing a mask. I'm in CT right now and I'm sitting at the operator's console. This is where I would sit while I'm scanning my patient, while I'm prepping my injector, while I'm I'm typing in my patient's information while I'm doing post-processing things. So this is the control console for the operator's station. Before we do anything, I'm gonna go grab my dosimeter. I'll be right back. So a dosimeter is basically to monitor your occupational dosage. Anyone who works in radiation typically has a dosimeter and there's all different types of dosimeters. Basically it just clips onto the collar of your scrubs or your jacket or whatever. You want to wear it at collar level for the most accurate reading. Since I am in the booth here, I don't really get a lot of radiation on my read, but when I did work at the hospital, obviously I was getting a lot more, being on portables, holding for ER exams, being in surgery, being in fluoroscopy. So keep in mind that I do work at a clinic, so I do get a lower exposure reading. So since I am around radiation, I do have to wear this. When I'm in MRI, I do not have to wear it because it doesn't use ionizing radiation. I am going to go out into the actual scan room now and turn on the actual scanner. You guys can probably hear that there is a little bit of white noise in the background so it's probably going to get a little bit worse if you're irritated by weird noises in the backgrounds of videos. I'm going to forewarn you now that you will hear that. The scanner noise is uncontrollable. It is kind of like a dull hum at all times. I'm going to go out there and turn on the scanner so I can actually show you how the scanner works. I'm going to turn the scanner on just by clicking that button. So now it's green. The actual CT scanner itself will slowly start to turn on. Other things that we do during the day, of course, we put a sheet down, um, clean off the bed in between each patient, change pillowcases, things like that, of course, to maintain a cleanly environment. It takes a few minutes for the scanner to actually boot up and turn on, and then we have to do an air calibration and kind of like a daily warm up to actually warm up the tube. This scanner itself won't actually even let you scan unless the tube is properly warmed up to a certain percentage. This video is not going to be prepping you for boards or anything. I'm literally just showing you guys what I do. So this is not an educational video. It's simply just like leisurely watching if you guys just wanted to see what I do for a day. But it is not educational by any means. I did just want to throw that out there. Being that I do work in an independent facility, I do have to start my own IVs when I do contrast injections. Some patients are easier than others to start IVs on, but that's kind of the fun of it, is to kind of learn from experience and to just see how far you've come with your IV starts. The scanner's warming up so you can probably hear it. I'm gonna have to talk a little bit louder, so I'm apologizing for all the noises that are gonna be happening in this video. But sometimes in my vlogs, I'll show kind of like setting more IV supplies out. So of course we have to use some saline to make sure that the IV is open and patent. We typically use 20 gauge needles in CT. In MRI we use the 22s because we do a lot of hand injecting. We use the Insight AutoGuard catheters and I really, really like these. I personally have never been a fan of butterflies. Alcohol prep pads, of course. We do have some gauze here too. These are like little microclave connectors. So basically when you open the saline, they go onto the end of the saline. So then this can go onto the end of the IV. See, we need to restock these. We also have a bunch of tourniquets there. These are our tegaderms. These hold the actual IV down. Of course, we aren't a hospital setting, so we take these off right away. And then we just use kind of a coban wrap to wrap everything up. The scanner is actually up and running now, so I can move the table around. But as you can see over this way, the table is slowly rising. Table max is 205 kilograms. You can send the table in very slowly. 
or you can send it in quickly. So as you can see, this is set up with the patient to go in feet first. You can also set the patient to go in head first. Typically we do that for head, soft tissue, neck, sinuses, things like that. You can also angle the two. We would do this for things like head work. Some people get freaked out by this. I think it's so cool. So that's that. This is what our phantom looks like. We have to scan it daily just to make sure everything's accurate and correct. Over here we have our crash carts, um, different types of cushions. We have lead down below, oxygen tanks, and then of course signage and stuff. And then over here we have an extra biohazard bin and gurney, and then we have slider boards, and I see the head holder got left out. So like I said, we can send our patients in different ways. So this right now is just kind of like a footboard. This holds like five pounds, so you don't want to put too much pressure on that with people's feet. But you can change out the head holder. You can also use this for extremities. Sometimes we'll put some cushions in here and use this for like an ankle. I wish I brought something to scan to show you guys, but. So you can kind of see the laser lights here. That's how we'd position our patient. And then you can just send them into that accurate line. Some scanners also do have little foot pedals that you can also use. I don't really like to use the foot pedals because these ones are kind of hard to push down on. This is our injector monitor, basically where we would pick our flow rate for the exam. And then this is the physical injector itself. Here are all of our syringe kits in the cabinet, and then here's an up-close view at our angiographic syringes. We do have to do two warm-ups pretty frequently, um, about every few hours if we haven't scanned a patient. Our patient load definitely is smaller here than in a hospital. Hospital settings do have very high CT volumes. Basically, you just let the air calibration run, and then after that, you would do your phantom in the day. So if you can see here, we have little stickers that say start, stop, move. You can also talk to the patient out in the room. You can also move the table up and down here, which is cool. You can tilt the scanner and you can take the patient out of the scanner completely with this button. So from here, since it is green, I can hit start and my air calibration will run through. So that is about everything in CT that I can think of to show for this video. This video, I just wanted to do kind of like the basics of kind of my day. Otherwise, I can kind of show some scans in another video that I can pull off of Google or something. Common exams that we do here, I guess I can kind of go through as well. Head, sinuses, IECs chest with contrast, abdomen pelvises, and then we'll occasionally do extremities and sometimes a PE study. I also forgot to mention that we do a ton of calcium scoring. Some other things to note, we don't do biopsies here, um, we don't do any types of injections. Hospital CT is definitely a lot different than a clinic CT position. Alright, I'm going to shut off the scanner and we'll head on over to x-ray. Alright, welcome to x-ray. I'm going to turn the lights on a little bit brighter than I would normally have them. This is the x-ray room and I'll kind of go through everything, show you guys everything, and then we'll wrap up this video. So I'm going to turn the x-ray room on. So as this is all warming up, it's gonna sing me a song here. So we have a Samsung unit. It is a ceiling mounted unit and it is incredible. I was so jealous of this room when I was in school, but of course we had to learn how to detent on the ceiling, which is basically locking in the tracks so you can expose at certain SIDs. But this is called a bucky. So this is an upright bucky. We can also do a horizontal bucky, which is really cool. Behind here, there is a 17 by 17 image detector. There's digital radiography and computed radiography, and then there's also film radiography which is very, very uncommon nowadays. I've never seen a facility that has that anymore. This is called a grid. So this captures any scatter radiation that is put off by the patient. So scatter radiation degrades your image quality and the grid is what absorbs that basically. There are some softwares that have something called a virtual grid. So basically it's a software that cleans up all the scatter. It's up and over my head how that software works and I don't even know if we have it here. So this is the upright bucky. You can move the bucky up and down or you can put it horizontally. And that's gonna go over to it. <laughs> hey little buddy. So this is how we do a lot of our hands. We do our shoulders like this, the axillary views, forearms, elbows, things like that on the horizontal bucky. I'll kind of show you guys how we would do like a hand picture. Of course, I don't have a patient here, so I can't really actually show you guys how that would work, but I'm doing my best, you guys. Just trying to give you guys a little bit of an insight on how 
the day kind of goes. This is another thing to note that every x-ray facility is going to be very different. So there's orthopedic facilities that are very, very, very picky on how the joint spaces are open, how things are positioned, if things are weight-bearing or non-weight-bearing. And then there's trauma x-ray where they don't really care if it's weight-bearing or not because the patient's screaming and in pain because something is severely wrong with them. One thing that's really interesting to me about x-ray is that you use a lot of your critical thinking skills. So a patient comes in with a broken arm and can't go like this for you that's where the critical thinking comes into play and kind of figuring out how to do something out of the box in a way this is my light field this is where i'm going to be actively exposing the patient so if i'm doing a hand x-ray i don't need to expose this much of the image receptor i can go in here and i can do what's called collimating so collimating is reducing your image field size you want to reduce patient exposure scatter radiation things like that you of course want to get clothing artifacts out of the way. My nails would probably cause an artifact in the picture. So another thing that you want on your picture is a marker. So a lot of people ask me what the heck are these things? It basically marks left and right side of the body and then the initials of the tech taking it. Some people are more picky than others about being anterior and lateral, but some techs aren't. These are my markers for when I am in here. I use rad adhesive, which some techs hate, but I personally like it because I can wash it with soap and water. This is the actual x-ray area where you'd expose. This is the exposure switch, and of course, this is the workstation. There really is not much to show on here. And then we have another lead line wall, and me, hello. This is the x-ray table. There is a foot pedal down yonder where you can send the table down, send the table up, and of course I'm using my foot to do this. And then the free floating button unlocks it in all ways and you can float the patient around. So this is where my detector is here. We do have a 14 by 17 here. If I'm doing a knee, let's say, and I'm throwing a little bit of angle on there, sometimes that won't move. I would have to hit the Bucky button so it centers it. This big tall guy over here, this is what we use to do weight bearing feet and we also do scoliosis exams on here. That's about it. I don't really know what else to tell you guys. So that is everything for this video. I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, of course, leave them in a comment. Or of course, you can message me on Instagram if you have questions. But that is all for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you soon in a new one.